This week's New York Times bestseller list is out. And once again at number one, Where the Crawdads Sing, from author Delia Owens. Just how the novel came to be is a story in itself, as Lee Cowan explains. It's almost in Canada with a view of Montana. That's just how remote this northern corner of Idaho really is. It's worlds away from almost everything, except nature. Now this is really special. See these little otter prints that they're like... Oh, yeah. For Delia Owens, it's heaven. Wildlife is her church. Vast isolation, her muse. Do you get lonely out here? I do. I get so lonely sometimes I feel like I can't breathe. That's but lonely. A, but you like a part of that though, right? I do, I do. And I decided to write a book about it. Please welcome Delia Owens. That book, Where the Crawdads Sing, has become a phenomenon. It still haunts me. It was so beautifully written. At a recent book fair in Savannah, Georgia, she had readers lined up around the block just to meet her. It's so many stories wrapped up in one. Well, I couldn't put it down. And you're Katie? The book has become a fixture on the New York Times bestsellers list over the last six months. On the day we visited, Putnam, her publisher, gave her a call. Congratulations. Three weeks. Oh, you got what? <laughs> to tell her she just made it to number one for the third week in a row. Oh, thank you. You guys just are so amazing. We're so happy for you, Delia. They keep sending me champagne. One thing about the success <laughs> is I have learned how to open a bottle of champagne by myself. Because they keep coming? <laughs> they keep coming. <laughs> what makes her success all the more remarkable is that Owens, now 70, has never written a novel before. I have had such a great response from my readers. I, I just feel overwhelmed with gratitude. The book is pretty tough to categorize. It's a love story, a murder mystery, a courtroom drama, and an ode to the outdoors, all in one. Also in here are old copies of the manuscript, which would be hilarious to read, but... It took her the better part of a decade to write. Inspiration coming whenever it came. I sleep at night with a little pad of paper in my bed with a flashlight and a pen. And I'll wake up in the middle of the night and write something down. Something occurs something to you. Something that I just... think is brilliant. And then when I wake up in the morning, I'll, I'll look at them and half the time I can't read what I wrote. Now the long awaited. Nope. I can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'm A thousand brilliant. such moments yeah, became it. little scraps of gold. Sand keeps secrets much better than mud. That one made it to the book. Sand keeps secrets much better than the mud. See, that's a great line. That line would never occur to me in a million years. The title, Where the Crawdads Sing, was taken from a phrase her mother used to use, encouraging her tomboy of a daughter to take to the woods around their rural Georgia home and listen to what those woods had to say. I learned from a book that crawdads don't really sing, but I learned from my mother that if you go far enough into the wilderness by yourself and there's nothing but you and nature, you will hear the crawdad sing. She took that advice to heart, earning a BS in zoology and a PhD in animal behavior. And at 24, bought a one-way ticket to Africa to put her science background to work. With her then husband, Mark Owens, they made a name for themselves in the wild, writing three books together about their experiences with elephants and lions. Tooth eruption and wear helped the Owens determine the lion's age even appearing in this National Geographic documentary. Guys, we've got company here, so they're bound to come over here. We were in one stage, the only two people in an area the size of Ireland. And we you had never saw anybody? We, the, no, not unless people came to our camp, and that was very, very rare. The two have since divorced, but Owens kept on writing. What she wanted to explore was something she felt all those years in Africa, but couldn't really measure at least not in a scientific way. And that was her feeling of being alone. I would watch the lions in the late afternoon with the sun um, setting behind the dunes, and they'd be 
playing and tumbling with their cubs and each other's cubs. And it made me think about my girlfriends back home. It made me realize how isolated I was not to have a group. And that was one thing I wanted to write about in my novel was the effect that isolation and loneliness can have on a person. The seed for her first novel was planted. She chose as a setting a lonely place indeed, a marsh like the one she took us to, just off the coast of Savannah. This would be just the kind of channel that she would come through. Yeah. Her protagonist is a girl named Kaya. It's not too bad. The marsh girl, as she's known in town, forced to scratch out a life out here all by herself. Yeah. But this is just the sort of habitat she would be in. After her family abandoned her. Feel like we should see her coming. And yes. Because we do you? talk about her like she's real. I, I, she is real. She's very real to me. For Kaya, this was her world. The wild, her teacher, both in love and loss. Much the way Owens herself had found her way through life. I feel at home when I'm in a place like this. Yeah. You can put me in the middle of a desert or in the middle of mountains. When I'm out, away from everything else, I feel like I'm home. Perhaps that's why writing fits her so. After all, it's a pretty solitary pursuit. Yes. But being a successful <laughs> writer, well, that's anything but. Is it hard doing a book tour and all that other stuff where you're surrounded by so many people and you've got so many events and book signings and everything? It's very hard. I don't like that part. And to stand up in front of a crowd and talk. I've lived a remote life. I'm not used to seeing so many people in one place. And although I'm sure you're very nice, <laughs> the feeling of excitement that I get right now is sort of the same as being charged by a lioness. You certainly can't put the genie back in the bottle. She's even sold the rights for an upcoming movie, one Reese Witherspoon is producing. Hollywood, though, is a different animal than she's used to. Woohoo! Boys! Come on, boys! Come on, boys! Delia Owens remains a nature girl at heart. <laughs> Happiest way out okay, yonder, boys. just like her mother always said. Okay, you've earned your dinner. Come on, boys! This is where the crawdads sing, right here. This is it. I finally found it. It took a lifetime. <laughs> yeah.